what are some of the red flags that indicate a problem in the gut to you? Like, what's the thing that makes you go, ha ha, I know where this is right now? <laughs> well, the strange thing is, um, Hippocrates was right. All disease begins in the gut. So if you're seeing me for headaches, uh, I'm going to look in the gut. If you're seeing me because you're anxious or depressed, I'm going to look in the gut. Recently, I had a patient, a uh, guy in his sev- 70s, very healthy, a quote unquote, and uh, he was sent by a friend and the guy's on uh, three medications to shrink his prostate. And um uh, I, he said, I'm really healthy. And I said, well, uh, okay, well, how come you're on three medications to shrink your prostate? He said, what are you talking about? He said, guys get big prostates as they get older. And I go, did you ever wonder why you might get a big prostate as you get older? He said, well, yeah, that's normal. I said, I don't have a big prostate. I used to have a big prostate, but I don't any longer. And I'm not on any medications. And he said, what, what are you talking about? I said, my prostate shrunk. And he said, What? I said, believe it or not, there's really good evidence that endotoxins coming from the rectum are the cause of prostatic hypertrophy. And if you stop the leaky gut, the prostate shrinks. And he goes, what? Mm -hmm. I said, it's not a normal thing to have a big prostate as you get older. This is exposure to leaky gut. Mm -hmm. And I had a woman, a 54 year old woman who recently had a hysterectomy for, uh, for fibroids. And I said, did you ever try to shrink your uh, fibroids before all this? She said, what are you talking about? You you can't shrink fibroids. I said, well, it's funny. We have a lot of women who have shrunk their fibroids. She said, well, how do you do that? And I said, well, there's really good evidence that fibroids are caused by endotoxemia from leaky gut and your uterus is sitting right next to your colon. What? So these are the sort of things that I would have gone, oh, don't be ridiculous 25 <laughs> years ago. That, that's ridiculous. And then I get to watch it. Uh, or, you know, like something simple like eczema, gone when you stop leaky gut. Now, if you'd asked me 15 20 years ago, what I thought about leaky gut, I would have told you it was pseudoscience. I I really would have. But thanks to uh, Alessio Fasano, who's now at Harvard and other people, um, this is proven. It's measurable. We can watch it occur and we can watch it go away. And so, yeah, Hippocrates, we should have paraphrased him. (laughs) All disease begins in a leaky gut. And for the most part, all disease can be cured or go into remission by fixing the leaky gut. So people may not know that stress can reduce stomach acid and cause digestive issues. Why why do you think this happens? You know, um, we definitely, I see about 80% of my practice is now autoimmune patients who want to get off their biologics. Uh, They realize that this is being on a transplant drug for the rest of their lives and not having a transplant is probably a dumb idea. Or they're on two or three uh, biologics and still have an active disease process. Um, And these folks uh, have, have taught me that many of them, a stressful event, uh, started this. Um, one of my patients with, uh, with Crohn's, uh, her mother died, um, suddenly when she was a teenager and literally kind of two days later, she started having uh, bowel issues that persisted for, you know, 20 years and she can, you know, point to literally that time. And so one of the things that does happen with stress is that we tend to divert all the blood flow, uh, all the splanchnic blood flow from the intestines uh, elsewhere. We tend to divert it to muscles because normally the only time we would have been stressed was when a saber-toothed tiger was about to eat us or a leopard was chasing us up a tree. And we would want to divert as much blood flow to our muscles as possible. So we would literally cut off the flow of blood 
to our intestines. And we actually still see that uh, in, for instance, marathon runners that at mile you know, 24, they're stopping to have bloody diarrhea because uh, they've literally sloughed the lining of their uh, intestines and colon because they're not getting any blood flow. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's not a surprise that stress uh, is capable of doing this mm -hmm. yeah it's crazy one thing I, I heard is that when you're stressed you burn through salt and when you become dehydrated obviously sodium you don't make enough hydrochloric acid for the stomach so therefore stress means you need more salt and needing more salt means you don't have enough stomach acid so therefore you down regulate stomach acid which means you don't kill off bacteria or viruses or whatnot parasites in your food which then is the beginning of the leaky gut in the first place and obviously then that has the circular effect of support uh, affecting the liver which then starts down regulating to compensate for it potentially as well and so it's really interesting how stress is you know when i when i went to the doctor many years ago and he said are you stressed and i was like not really but the thing is i was and from all the symptoms that were going on i was so i can understand why he asks but the thing is the detail of what stress actually does to us on a physiological level is insane yeah, and they, the other thing that people forget, uh, one of my deadly disruptors is these uh, acid blocking drugs. <laughs> the, you know, that, that are ubiquitous. Uh, everybody thinks that they should, you know, pop this acid blocking drug, uh, so that they can have, uh, you know, a spicy vindaloo, uh, for <laughs> example. Uh, and, you know, I want Vindaloo, but so I'm going to block my stomach acid so I don't get heartburn. And it's like, you have no idea what you're doing. You're, you're supposed to have stomach acid, among other things. You're right. It's great for killing bacteria that shouldn't be in there or other parasites. It's also great for breaking down proteins and lectins happen to be proteins. I mean, we're, we're really well designed and then we have to go and screw it up so we can have a spicy meal. <laughs> it's quite funny when I hear anyone say, oh yeah, I get uh, get heartburn or acid reflux or whatever. And they're like, oh, but I just pop a Rennie. I'm just like, you do realize that's like literally doing the opposite, the exact opposite of what you should do. And it's like, and then people spend years on it and then they end up having serious digestive issues and, and, and actually really bad, really bad gut issues as a result. Yeah. It's bonkers, isn't and, it? And brain issues um, that, you know, Multiple studies now show that these drugs uh, correlate strongly with developing dementia. And it's, and I mean, in the United States, there's a black box warning on all these uh, proton pump inhibitors that you should only take them for two weeks maximum. And yet, you're right, people are on these things for years and years and years without realizing what they're doing. More amazing episodes just like this one. Watch now. Your vitamin D is essential to make your immune system work properly. And we know that sunlight is a great way to get vitamin D. But for most people, it is not enough. Most people need at least five to 10,000 international units of vitamin D3 a day. 